This whole video is just going to be me struggling to open things. Me. Me. How's this open? Open! It's going to be bad when I can't get it open. Oh my god, I don't want to break it. Me. Okay, I got it. There, 50 years later. Okay. Hey guys, long time no see. I have been gone for a long time. But let me just explain. So, one of the things I really wanted to focus on this year for my class was my classes. Like, I wanted to really focus on them, make sure they're doing great, make sure they're doing amazing, make sure class is fun, all those kind of things. So, I've been focusing on that. It's been going really well and so now I feel like I'm finally in a place where I can start making videos again but I have to put my students first so that's kind of the reasoning why I've been out um, but I have something really exciting to talk about today I had another donors choose funded it finished getting funded on my birthday so that's exciting um, it was actually the day before my birthday but I'm just saying it's my birthday and it's all fun things to use in my class. Um, and so I think my actual thing was titled Engaging Literacy Resources. Because um, I really just want to make class fun. And especially with my small groups that I'm doing this year, I wanted to have games and things to play. So... I thought maybe we could do an unboxing. Now, I will tell you, I've already unboxed the things, but I haven't opened them and, like, really looked at them. So, does that count? I don't know. But that's what we're going to do. So, let's get started. Let's see. So, these thingies are on top, so I'll start with them. So, these are wall pops. And they are dry erase, like, bubbles that you can put on things. So it makes, wherever you stick these, a dry erase board. Um, and when I first got these, my thought process was I didn't have any whiteboards, any mini ones. And I know I wanted to use them for small group. So I was going to put the bubbles on my table. The only thing is, now I actually have whiteboards, mini whiteboards, because um, my old mentor teacher, who is getting ready to retire, was like, do you want these? And it's like a class set of like the legit mini whiteboards. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so I have a class set, but now I have these. So these say um, they are reusable, they're removable. You can reposition them, all that kind of stuff. You And they're made to go on walls, but I'm going to put them on my table, my small group table that's right here. And that way I won't have to get out the mini whiteboards and I can just use the mini whiteboards for um, when the whole class needs to do something and use these for small group, which I think will work pretty good. So they do come with one little marker, which is not going to cut it for every kid. But I thought this could save us some paper when we're just practicing spelling and stuff like that. So I just got gray ones because it matches my room. But they have lots of pretty colors. So wall pops. Okay. This is a pack of fly swatters. So I know you're like this crazy woman. So it's a little hand. Um, these are for a review game um, that I've seen online, which is people will write words or characters or whatever, and then they call out the definition or a description or something like that, and then the kids have to the answer. And the first one to the answer wins. So I thought these were really cute and 
elementary schoolers or who was using this, but I mean, my high schoolers love to hit something and they love to play games and win. So I thought a pack of these would be good. And then if they break, it's not a big deal because I mean, they're kind of flimsy, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten of them and there's red, blue, and green. So, yeah, glass waters. So these things are not very exciting, but I mean, like, there's still things that, like, I didn't want to have to pay for, so I put on Donner's Chews. So some Expo dry erase markers, and these are the mini ones because I want them to be able to write on these. And big markers, sometimes the kids struggle if we're writing a whole sentence to make it fit. So I was wanting some smaller ones, and of course we got some pretty colors, um, and they can use them for these. So there's that. The other thing I got is this is a pack of liquid chalk markers, the washable ones, and this is a 12 pack. So you can see it's got a bunch of gorgeous colors, and I wanted these because you can write on your windows on glass with these and I have two giant windows in my room and I thought for group work instead of using paper maybe it'd be exciting to actually write on the window and then it just washes right off um, so that's why I got these and um, yeah I I did test one of them and these actually write really good I didn't know if they were going to be janky um but yeah I tried the white one and you can see I used the white one to write on this board that's in the background and it shows up really good so these are better quality than the other ones that I had already so these are the brand is creative oh you can see my reflection Creative liquid chalk markers. They're also safe, non toxic, and easy to clean. Supposedly, you can also write on the desks with these, and I've done it before, but it wipes off real easy. So I could use them for that too if I wanted to. Okay. Um, let's see what the next couple of things are. So now I have some games. So this is Boggle, and this is just old-fashioned Boggle, like two-player Boggle, but I thought it would be really good to do with small groups when we want to practice spelling, so let me attempt to open it. Here's how it works, at least the way that I understand it. So you put the lid on here and like mix up all the letters I can't see what I'm doing until they all fill up a square again and they land and so then you have all of your letters and it comes with this little timer and so you set the timer and they have to make as many words as they can with these letters so like let's look higher hit kite you know uh, there's a lot of H's, but I thought this would be fun. I mean, this is just fun literacy stuff. And then the little kit is cool because the timer fits into this little slot, and then you put the lid back on it like this, and then like the other pieces like get lost. Which, if you teach high school, you know that like pieces get lost very quickly so that one is fun so that's boggle this is like I guess is this mini boggle or just regular boggle I don't know um okay so this next one is called word around and it says race to unravel the word fast-paced card game ages 10 to adult and so there's a word written in the circle and you have to see who can figure out what the word is really fast so do you know what word is? Surprise! So I'm going to open these and let's look at some of them. So this is what the cards look like. So let's see if we can do them. So let me see. Um, 
so plain air, I think is the blue. Um, where does it tell you the answers? Does this not tell you the answers? Oh no, this is going to be rough then, because that means I have to be able to figure them all out. Uh, bun. Okay, expect is the blue. This is annoying. Let me look at the directions so I can see. All players look at the card on top of the stack and race to correctly read and call out the word written in the outer ring. The first card of every game starts with a black ring. Okay, so the outside one. If you are first to correctly identify and call out the word, you win the card. When you win a card, take it and place it face down in front of you. The back of the card will show one of three colors. This indicates which color ring players must look at to call out the word on the next card. Okay, so like this one's blue on the back. So after we finish this one, the next one you look at the blue ring. Okay. But it doesn't tell you the answers. What if I can't figure them out? Okay, I got to figure this out. Oh, positive. So it's really about just like start picking a letter to start with and then saying, okay, because like I was starting with this one, it doesn't work, but then I started with P. It's like, oh, it's positive. So, okay, I think I can deal with this. So good. So if it's a challenge for me, then it'll really be a challenge for the kids, which is what I want. I wanted some games that could be really challenging for my upper level students so if it's challenging for me then this one will be good for them and then I wanted some games that would also challenge and grow my lower students which I think something like Boggle will be good for them so cool this is fun okay so while we're looking at games let's look at two more games um, and these are kind of similar so this one is Apple Letters which is made by the people that make Bananagrams, which is this one. Um, and so it's a little apple. And then on the inside is the directions. So for this one, you have to like snake. You have to like snake them. So like it shows you the picture. So you couldn't fill in the middle. And it's just... Um, letter tiles. So, again, something fun to practice um, spelling. I don't know if these are all fit back in the little apple, but it's cute. So cute. And then, so that's apple letters. And look, it has like the little stem and the little leaf. And this is Bananagrams, so this one's like the famous one. And I got double Bananagrams, because if I'm playing it with a small group that has five kids in it, plus me, then we're going to need a lot of letters. So, this one, I think you just set up however, you know, you want to. And it just has like Scrabble tiles, but this one has two packs of letters. So, that's cool. I like this as opposed to Scrabble. Like, I do have Scrabble, but this one, you just take the letters and lay it out however you need to. You don't need, like, a board for it, which, I mean, you could do with Scrabble, but, like, they give you the board or whatever. Um, and you don't count up kind of the thing. It's more about just making words. So, double Bananagrams. Okay. And then here's something else fun. I got these answer buzzers and there's four of them and you can see the colors and instead of going like eh, they make these sounds so this one goes boing, this one says ding, this one says honk honk and then this one goes ding dong. So I think this will be really fun if we're playing review games or whatever and they seem to be pretty like high 
quality. I don't have the batteries in them yet. The only thing I'll say that's annoying but also good is you have to have a screwdriver to be able to put the batteries in. And they each take two AAA batteries. Yeah, two AAA batteries a piece, which means I'm going to have to have two, four, six, eight, eight batteries for these. But it screws on. So it's annoying because it's going to take me forever to get them in. And it's, you know, that little microscopic screw. But also, I was thinking, this is probably good for the kids, though, because they won't be able to take the back off and mess with the batteries and stuff because they mess with things. So these are really cute. They say they're for ages three plus. So I could definitely see these working in preschool or elementary school, middle school, high school. Um, and they're from Learning Resources. I can't wait to see how these sound. They'll be fun. Okay. The next thing I've got is from Mind Sparks and it's dry erase blocks. So what you can do is it's a foam. Let's see if I can get one out. So it's a foam block and like this thing is sturdy. And then it has little dry erase panels on it. So you can write on it. And it comes with a little marker. This is a little crappy marker. But you write on it. You wipe it off. Yay! So I was thinking it could be good for um, if we're doing like practice, for like figurative language or something. I could write like simile. And they roll it. If simile lands up top, they have to give me a simile. Um, I could put a character name on it and roll it. They have to tell me something about the character. Um, I was like, we can since they're blank, we can use them for whatever we want to. I could put a punctuation mark on it, and then they might have to write a sentence with that punctuation mark. I could put vocab words on it. Give me the definition. Give me a sentence. Like, we can use these for absolutely anything. So, um, I just thought they'd be a really cool resource. To kind of have at my disposal so I like those and they are like they are super high quality because I did buy some of the um, ones that they had at Target this year and I really like them I have some of the chalkboard ones and I have some of the dry erase ones but they are tiny like I can barely write anything on them whereas like these are big which means that it's gonna allow me to be able to write a full thing on it which is what I wanted and the colors are really pretty so there's a turquoise an orange a lime green and then a purple so these are really nice and they are mind sparks brand so it has six obviously it's a cube it has six sides so there you go all right something else so this is really Englishy. So these are foam reading comprehension cubes, and they are also from Learning Resources, which is the same people that made those answer buzzers. And there are six of the cubes, and they say they are for ages six plus. I will say I wish that they had some of these that were a little bit more high school, but... I had some that my mom gave me when she retired that are like this, and uh, it's a set, and they have some good things on it, and they have some like, duh things. So like this one's like, how did this story make you feel, and why? So that's a little low level. And then there's one that's like, how did the main character change from the beginning to the end? So that can be a little bit more complex. What's one thing you dislike about the main character? So, you know, like, it's a crapshoot for kind of what you're getting. So, I wanted some more options. So, let's open these. So, so these are foam. So, they're, like, squishy. Um, but they're also, they seem very high quality. So, let's see. This says, who is the illustrator? Oh, no. This might not be. Um, what does the title tell you about the story? What background did you bring to the story? 
predict what will happen in the story. Is this fiction or nonfiction? So, okay, so that one has like one that doesn't work. Identify unfamiliar words in the title. What are the pictures? Pictures. What questions do you have about the story? What would you like to find out in the story? How might the story relate to your life? So again, that one has a lot about the pictures. Um, okay, let's look at the blue ones. Find and define an unfamiliar word. Identify one problem or conflict in the story. How would you attempt to solve a problem in the story? Who are the main characters? Where does the story take place? Identify and predict how a problem may be solved. Who are the main characters? Okay, so this one, the entire one seems to be pretty good. I'm wondering if these go up in skill. If like the red is like lower level, blue is a little bit higher. Predict how the story will end. Which character can you relate to? How does the story relate to your life? Choose a problem. How could the problem have been avoided? Did the solution to one problem cause another? Uh, what questions do you have about the story? Predict how it will end. So it's kind of repetitive, but that one's good. Let's see the green one. What lessons can you learn? How might you retitle it? How might it end differently? Retell a main event within the story. How are you and the main character different? How are you and the main character alike? So I think the blue ones are high level, and these are medium, and the red ones are low. Um... How can you relate? Summarize. How does it end? What's the main idea? Identify a paragraph that used descriptive writing. Ooh. Uh, how was the problem solved? What's the main idea? Okay. So I would say they're okay. It's kind of like the ones I already have, but that's fine. Um, I have enough now that I could give out one to each table, each little group um, when we're reviewing. So that's nice. So, oh, God. Um, so there's six of them, and um, some of the questions repeat, some don't, but I don't know. And that's from learning resources. It does come with instructions, so I don't really know. Oh, they give some suggested activities. Oh, here's how I should have read this. So it says the red ones are pre-reading cubes okay the blue ones are during reading cubes and the green ones are after reading okay that makes sense and then it says you can use them with guided reading groups random writing assessments or whole class or small group discussions so actually that's pretty good so cool um, I like those I like their suggestions Let's see what else we have. I'm almost done. So then I got these two things, which are kind of similar. And I didn't really know if these were going to be good or not, but they seem to be very geared more towards middle school and high school. So the first one is a figurative language in a jar, and it says metaphor, simile, and idiom learning cards, ages eight and up. And there are 101 cards in the container. So like you pull one out. And this one says, simile, she ran as fast as a horse, means, and then it gives you four answer choices, no, three answer choices, and then the correct answer. So it means, excuse me, the girl is a very fast runner. I kind of looked through these the other day when I opened this, and I will say these are not as high level as I expected. I also don't know if I really noticed that it's only metaphor, similes, and idioms. I think I was hoping it would also be like hyperbole and automatopoeia and alliteration and all that but that's fine because I still have kids that struggle with these especially ELL or ESL students that English is not their first language um, or lower level students that are just kind of struggling with the concept of saying one thing and meaning another not taking things literally so I think these could be good this might be a good warm-up thing to do every day with a class. Um, I already do some warm up stuff, but I could see you pulling one and like using that to get them started. And then this other one is grammar in a jar. And so this one is adjectives, adverbs, pronouns, and prepositions, ages six and up, 101 learning cards. So on these, 
and you pull one out, looks like this, and then it says, uh, it has this different card. So this one's a challenge card, and it says, find a pronoun, an adverb, a preposition, and an adjective. And so it gives you, she loves skiing swiftly down the steep mountain. So she swiftly down and steep. So this is good because um, the kids struggle with these four. They can pretty much tell me if something's a noun or a verb and things like that, but um, adjective, adverb, pronoun, and preposition are something they struggle with, so this is a good review. And I like these containers. Okay, this one's not very fun, but I got a pack of these erasers. So these are dry erase erasers. They're foam on top. They're pretty high quality. I've been using the facial sponges from Dollar Tree, and they work good, but um, obviously these work better. And these are magnetic because they're like sticking to my board. So, I mean, this is a big pack. How many is in here? 16 pack of these. And they're the color of my room. So, um, these are nice. This means I can probably give two or three to each group when the whole class uses the whiteboards. So, cool. High schoolers don't like to share. This is another fun thing. So, this is 52 blank puzzle pieces. And they are dry erase. And they are for ages four and up. But I thought this would be really cool to do with... Um, connecting something so we could use them to put together a sentence we could use them to like here's the word here's the definition here's a synonym here's an antonym and like connecting them um and oh on the back they give you a bunch of suggestions so they're saying you could put this is obviously like for little kids but you could do the abcs and put them in order match uppercase and lowercase letters um, they have to put in missing letters, um, concentrations are like matching, um, spell your name, spell list words, so like vocab words, high frequency words, sure, print words and make sentences, which is what I was talking about doing, um, and then scrambled sentences, so they have to unscramble it so it makes sense, so that could be good. Um, and then they have some math ideas on here, too. And you can see some of them on the front. So, yeah, I think this could be good. I was thinking this could actually work really good for my seniors, who we have to learn about how to do citations and quotes, because I can have a bunch of them that have quotation marks on them, and the period, and the parentheses, and the page number, and they have to put the whole thing in order. Um, which is something they struggle with. So sometimes making it kinesthetic and like manipulative could help. So that's something I'll be using these for. And I guess we can open it. I will say it doesn't sound like there's 52 in here. So we'll have to see. Okay, are you... Oh, see, I swear to God, this is why... This is why I don't want to open them. Oh my god, it opens from the side. Wow. Oh no. Okay, y'all. Are you ready? You know why it didn't sound like 52? These are tiny. So the front says actual size. That is the actual size. Dang. Two inches by two inches. Why didn't I notice that? These are tiny. I mean, like, they're still going to work. But I thought these were big. Okay. So, they will still work, and they're still nice. But I thought that they were bigger. They're not as fun now. Okay, and let me, now that I've ripped this box, I can't put it back together. It opens like this. Um, these are made by Key Education, in case you're wanting to get some. So there are those. And I have one more thing, and that is 
dry erase pockets or dry erase sleeves. Um, there's 10 of them and they come in all these pretty colors. So here's the pink one. And these have a marker actually attached to them with an eraser, which is nice. And then um, you can slide the paper in. The kids can write on it without actually writing on the paper. Then you can wipe it and then you still have a nice piece of paper. So um, I thought maybe for small groups this could be good. Or if we're looking at essays, um, sometimes we don't actually want to write on the essay. So I thought these could be helpful because then I don't have to print 50 copies every year. You could just keep the same one. So here's all the colors. And then here's some more colors. So these are cute. We can definitely use them. And I would just tell you guys, like, this is such a fun donors choose to have funded. Because normally I just get books. And, like, I like books. And books are exciting. But, like, these things are, like, fun things. You know, they're, like, games and stuff. So I'm really excited to use them. I will say just having them sit on the table after I unbox them. All the kids are like, are we going to play with us today? And remember, these are high schoolers. I also have seniors who are like, are we going to play with those today? And I'm like, wow, okay. <laughs> so, um, there's that. And I'm very appreciative to the people that gave to my donors choose. Some of the people were you guys that watch these videos or follow me on Instagram. So, thank you so much. Um... And hopefully I will have some videos for you where I can show us using these things and how I use them. Um, definitely if you're wanting more frequent updates from me, then check my Instagram because I've been trying to post on Instagram daily um, and share things that I'm using or doing in my class. But yeah. I will also say I am really excited to share these things with my friends that are also teachers at my school because obviously I'm not using these things every day and the more fun we can make everyone's classes, the more kids are going to enjoy coming to school and the more they're going to learn. So I have encouraged my friends that also teach here to come grab any of these things at any time when they would like to use them with their kids. So we do share. Teachers do share with each other. <laughs> so, thanks so much for tuning in and watching. Make sure that you comment down below and tell me any of your questions that you have about the products or about Donors Choose. This is my third Donors Choose to be completely funded, so I don't consider myself to be an expert, but I mean, I'm, I seem to be successful at them for whatever reason, so if you have questions, you can ask me about that. Um... And if you like the video, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to do that because we are really close to a thousand subscribers, which what, what would be really exciting. I don't know why I just did that. And yeah, I think that's it. I hope you're having a great school year. I am. And I think I'm having my best year that I've had ever. Ever. Everything is perfect. I have wonderful classes. It's great. And this just makes it even better. So, you have a good school year too. And let me know if you need anything. I'll be here.